right here is the Western Black Widow, one of the most toxic spiders in North America. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gently see if she'll hang out on my hand. Hi. Oh, she's really stressed. Earlier this year, I was bitten by a widow spider in the field. I don't care what you say, these spiders. Ow! <gasps> what happened? Bit me. Believe it or not, I actually fought with whether or not to even release that video because most of the time here on this channel, I, I talk about how these, these spiders, whether they're super venomous or not, they're not out to get us. But the biggest reason that I fought with releasing that one was you know, while I learned valuable lessons from that incident, I really felt like I lost something that day. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm a biologist on a mission to unearth the natural world's strangest secrets. From the weirdest animals you've never heard of, to biological secrets of animals you thought you knew well, each adventure reveals something new. But exploring into the secret world is easiest when we push past fear. And ever since that bite incident, I've carried a deep-rooted fear with me. I wasn't always comfortable around spiders, but through years of study and training, I've worked with some of the most venomous species on the planet. I've seen that by pushing past fear, the world becomes a rich and fascinating place. Today, I'm in Arizona, and it's time to once again confront fear. Through our many night hikes in the desert washes, we've seen a fair share of western black widows. This is the last species of widow spider that I need to complete them all for the US and a serious opportunity. If I want to continue to go on expeditions searching for the natural world's secrets, I need my confidence back. To regain a part of me that I lost when I was bitten by the red widow, I need to claim this lifer and handle a western black widow spider. And wouldn't you have it, my buddy Zach has just found an absolutely huge one. I'm gonna have to go quick, so I'll do more talking later. This is a Western Widow right here, and I got basically just one shot to do this. She's gonna beeline it. Nice. Good catch. Like that. That is the Western Widow, the one Latrodectus species that I've been missing. And look at the size of that one. This is gonna be good. At long last, I finally have them all. This right here is the Western Black Widow. I'm gonna take her out real quick. It's actually the first widow I have worked with since I was bitten by the Red Widow back in March. I'll say one thing. After you're bitten by a widow spider, you definitely respect them a lot more. And this spider right here is very special. The Western Black Widow calls the western half of the United States home, where it lurks in forgotten corners building its strong, tangled web. Like other widow spiders, it has those long, spindly legs and a jet black abdomen marked with a bright red hourglass. It used to be said that that hourglass meant if you were bitten, you had an hour to live. And while the headaches, nausea, and muscle spasms that a bite from this spider would cause would certainly make you wish you were dead, it's far from life-threatening. But the Western Widow is one spider I don't want to let my guard down with. Out of the spiders in the US, the Southern Black Widow has one of the most toxic venoms. And when it was first discovered, the Western Widow was considered a subspecies of the Southern. So it stands to reason that the neurotoxic venom that this spider packs is on par with their Southeastern cousins. This widow I have here though is huge. Huge spider with a highly toxic venom equals a very bad bite. So I'm keeping her on the stick while she calms down watching her behavior very closely. Super, super neat looking spider. Very infamous, very, very powerful creature right there. Something that is truly awesome. Now what I'm actually gonna do, so if you can see right here, she's a lot calmer now. I think, if she'll let us, I think I can free handle this spider. Let's see how she's gonna behave. Every time I see those spindly legs and that like bulbous black abdomen, I, I just see the Red Widow crawl off that stick, and I, I feel that sting on my knuckle. It, this is ridiculous, but it's, it's proving a lot more of a mental battle to freehandle this spider than I thought it was going to be. <sighs> it's getting late. Um, I definitely don't want to attempt this when I'm brain dead and I'm out of caffeine for the night, so... <sighs> One more try. <sighs> Let's do it. So I got right here 
is the Western Black Widow. I gotta say, I am nervous. Let me tell you, as this spider walks in my hand, it is like I am starting from scratch. Every move this spider makes, I have this instinct. I'm waiting for it to bite me. I'm waiting for it to light me up and I'm waiting for those muscle spasms to return. It is, <laughs> it's a lot. Ever since I got bit by the Red Widow, it's like free handling is something I do very, very cautiously. I wanna make sure I'm really, really reading the spider. As long as I focus on not pinching her legs between my fingers and just act as a surface for her to walk around on, an extension of her environment, she stays relatively relaxed. You know, she's running around because she feels exposed. There's a big light beating down on her. And you know, these are nocturnal spiders that hide in rock crevices all day. If they see light, that means they're exposed. That means that they've been found and they're not happy about it. Black Widow vision is really not that complex. They really only can differentiate between light and dark. So she can probably smell and feel that she's on a much larger animal, but she doesn't feel like she's being eaten by a predator or attacked. She just feels exposed. And as long as I don't do anything to make her feel like she's attacked, I'll be just fine. Look at this spider right here. It is honestly interesting because her behavior is a lot more like the brown widow, I'm noticing. Very, very active. And it's kind of cool too, because they're very they're a lot more patterned than the Southern Black Widow that I'm used to seeing. A little bit of striping. In this lighting, you can see a little bit of striping on her legs. And she even has kind of a reddish brown tinge to her abdomen there. Me handling this widow is probably the most important thing that I could have done down here in Arizona. And I know how much you love seeing me go after even more toxic spiders. So, if I can't get over this block that I've developed with widows, I know that I have no chance of going after six-eyed sand spiders or Sydney funnel webs one day. You know, and after that one bite, I think there's always gonna be a little bit of distrust in there. And getting a chance to just look at this widow up close, seeing how cool and just weird looking it is, I'm reminded of just the fact that once we push past fear, the world really is a rich, and fascinating place. And one of the spiders that helped me to really come to that conclusion was actually the tarantula. If you wanna see why I think the tarantula is such a good ambassador spider, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.